Mr. Speaker, I rise to make my contribution to the bill currently being debated in the Appropriations Bill 2019. Some years ago, Mr. Speaker, the late Bob Marley penned a song entitled Hypocrites. <laughs> And uh, the chorus for that song, uh, Mr. Speaker says, See the hypocrites, Damagalande. See the hypocrites, Damagalande. See the hypocrites, Damagalande, man, go. I don't quote a song, too. And it seems as though, Mr. Speaker, one has gone already. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, let me commend in the first instance the mover of the bill for yet a next budget which will move in this country forward. The fact is, Mr. Speaker, that the mover of the bill has been the Prime Minister of this Federation since 2015. And this is the fourth budget address eh, that he would have presented in this honorable house. Each and every year since then, Mr. Speaker, he has presented a budget address eh, that is tax-free, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Tax-free. And uh, in spite of the fact, Mr. Speaker, eh, that he continues to present a tax-free budget the country, Mr. Speaker, continues to move forward. There continues to be positive economic growth in this country, Mr. Speaker. And it seems as though, Mr. Speaker, there are some persons who can't deal with that. And in trying to provide a response, Mr. Speaker, there are being hypocritical, Mr. Speaker. I have heard all sorts of arguments being made, Mr. Speaker, relative to the CBI program and how this government is corrupting the CBI program. We have heard about illegal conversion of funds, how the SIDF operated then, how it is operating now, whether or not we are doing things legally, are illegally, they went so far, Mr. Speaker, as to say that citizenship is now being sold like sugar cakes, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as I said, some persons in here, Mr. Speaker, have been quite hypocritical. Mr. Speaker, we have heard about persons not being able to see the accounts, etc. But the fact is, Mr. Speaker, there is a public accounts committee which has been established. As a matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, the member for number six is the chairperson for the public accounts committee. When he comes in here, Mr. Speaker, and he says is that no accountability is being given to the public, he has responsibility for a committee, Mr. Speaker, that he can convene yeah. to look into the accounts and the operations of government. I don't want to waste my time. Okay. Not one okay. single time, Mr. Speaker, has he convened a meeting of the Public Accounts Committee. Okay. Instead, he comes in here today, Mr. Speaker, and he says committee. that the committee cannot function because he can only summon such persons, Mr. Speaker, as permanent secretaries and so on other department heads to give evidence before the Public Accounts Committee, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, yes, the Act says who can be summoned to give evidence. But the Act goes further, Mr. Speaker, because it says in the case of the permanent secretary, the permanent secretary can summon other government employees, other witnesses, to give evidence 
or to assist with evidence before the public accounts committee. The act is here. The act says it. The act has been gotten. But he has only read, Mr. Speaker, what he wants the country to hear. But the act is quite clear that other persons can be summoned from within any government department by the permanent secretary to assist with giving evidence. Even if he thinks, Mr. Speaker, that the act is one that limits his scope, Mr. Speaker, call a meeting of the committee and then come with the evidence to suggest is that changes are to be made to the act. As a matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, he can bring a private member's bill. He can bring a private member's bill before the parliament to amend the act if he is of the view that the act doesn't have enough teeth, Mr. Speaker. That is all he needs to do. He has come here with other things. So, Mr. Speaker, if that is his argument, let him bring a private member's bill to amend the act. You brought private member's bill. But you see, like, as I said, Okay. Hypocrite! Yeah, See them a girl I'm there? Can you refer to the section just for our thing where you can... Read the bill, he has a copy. No, 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 I'm asking... He has a copy, read the bill. The of the, Mr. Speaker, you can say you ask us to provide evidence. I'm asking, can, 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 can we provide... So I have the bill in front of me. Mr. Speaker! speaker. At a point of order, Mr. Speaker. Not it's not a point of order. At a point of order, the member has said that the uh, Public Accounts Committee bill allows for other witnesses to be summoned by the committee. I am asking for him to point out, yes he did, he said that the permanent secretary can summon other people in the government to appear before I am asking just for our edification in the house. If I am asking for it, you want me to? Why is it he can't reference? I just want him to reference it. Let me finish the rant and read. Yeah, just, just reference for me. Because the bill was debated in this parliament. And the member for number three was a member of parliament when he was debated. His leader referred to the bill this morning. So if he really wants to know what the bill says, he ought to know. Uh, he can borrow a copy from his member, Mr. Speaker, and read it. But it says here, Mr. Speaker, in section 10. In section 10, Mr. Speaker, and in 10, 3, it says, Mr. Speaker, subsection 3, a witness may invite staff from his or her government department to assist him or her whilst he or she gives evidence. Right. So the committee cannot call him. So, Mr. Speaker. I never said the committee can call other persons, Mr. Ladies, Speaker. Mr. I said that the permanent Mr. secretary can Mr. call Mr. other persons from within the department to give evidence. That and that is a fact. That. As a matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, there's an article here, December 10, 2017. And the article refers to the same member from number six saying, is that ahead of the CPA conference being held in St. Kitts and Nevis, the government has rushed to appoint a public accounts yes, committee. I said that. I said it's an article entitled, PM Harris rushes to appoint public accounts committee ahead of CPA conference in St. Kitts and Nevis Who next month. And it was published, Mr. Speaker, I am you trying to find... The, the copy is here, the speaker can be given a copy. Give him a copy, <laughs> that's what the rule is. He yeah. ruled about that of me. And so, Mr. Speaker, provide him with a copy. You just say, sit it. Wait, wait, wait. You just say, sit it. And Mr. Speaker, please admit. No, no, no. Just admit. Just say it. You have to say it. So, Mr. Speaker, exactly. He has admitted that he said it. You have to say it. But no. I said that is what they did. Mr. Speaker. That is what you all did. Order. 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 You are deceptive. 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 
Speaker, that is why I say. You have to do it, some hypocrites. The hypocrites. <laughs> I ask for a public accounts committee. You look got the public accounts committee. And then when you get the public accounts committee, you say you can't function with the public accounts committee. You, you, look back on you. you can't function with it. You Not a single meeting of the committee call, Mr. Speaker. Not a single meeting of the committee call. Mr. Speaker, I move on to citizenship by investment. And if they answer you already, they're going to answer you. More answer you know, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, the Public Accounts Committee is there. But, Mr. Speaker, he goes on to speak about the Citizenship by Investment Program. He said citizenship being sold like sugar cake. He wants to know about conversion of funds. He wants to know about the legality of the Hurricane Relief Fund. And also, Mr. Speaker, the Sustainable Growth Fund. Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker, you know, I've been to court many times in this country. And when I had any question as to the legality of anything that was done by them, I went to the court and I challenged it. Mm. And if it feels that these funds are illegal, Mr. Speaker, he is free to do likewise. But the fact is, Mr. Speaker, really is that we do have SNR, SRNOs, Mr. Speaker, in respect of both funds. Legally established, Mr. Speaker. Legally established, Mr. Speaker. Legally established. Chapter 1.05. Answer, Mr. Speaker. That is not the relevant section. Really? Answer, Mr. Speaker. Both are grounded in law, Mr. Speaker. It is illegal. And the member for number six knows that. Are you illegal in here? Knows that, Mr. Speaker. Unlike the SIDF, Mr. Speaker. We are many persons, Mr. Speaker question the constitutionality of the SIDF, this government has taken a decision that all monies must go into the consolidated fund. The SIDF? Because when you take monies and put it into the consolidated funds, Mr. Speaker, there's more accountability. Yes. So why you don't put it in? You have the Ministry of Finance. Why you don't put the SIDF funds in there? You have the Accountant General Department. You have the audit department, Mr. Speaker, which can readily audit the consolidated fund. And so this government has taken a decision, rather than putting any monies in the SIDF, the monies are placed in the consolidated fund. And so, Mr. Speaker, when you look at the budget, when you look at the budget, Mr. Speaker, you know how much money is this government is expecting in respect of the citizenship by investment program. Not like in the past, the money going into SIDF and no one has any idea as to how much money is being collected. I remember the member for number eight coming in here and asking a question, asking questions as to the SIDF. How many passports were sold? Yes. Okay. How, money, how much money is in the fund? And the answer provided to the member for number eight yes. is that it's a private entity. Yes. It is a private entity, a private foundation. And if he wants answers, he should go to the SIDF to get answers. Don't ask him anything. I'm coming in here talking about people trying to hide information from the public. SIDF was an attempt to hide information from the public. Selling citizenship of the country, Mr. Speaker. And the country cannot know how many passports are being sold and how much money collected from the citizenship program. And the point of order, sir, based on what he's saying, that the SIDF was created to hide money from the people of the country? 
I can give you specifically what was the role and function of the SIDF when it was created by the National Bank Trust Company. It's there. It's a foundation act that gives it its strength, its function, its purpose. It's there, and he should know. Audited accounts have been published up to 2013. Published accounts. So he can't be getting away with that. He's misleading the country. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, imagine, imagine, citizenship of the country being sold and going into a fund, according to him just now, owned by the National Trust. Of course. The citizenship of the country being sold and going into a fund owned by the National Trust. Foundation Act. Owned by the National Trust. Mr. Speaker, we have said that that must come to an end, and we have brought it to an end. Citizenship money, it goes into the consolidated fund. And so any individual... The member from number five is again attempting to mislead the nation. There are two options for the citizenship by investment program. The real estate option does not put the majority of the money into the consolidated fund. So there is no distinction between the fact that you can have a fund that someone donates to that is in the national interest compared to real estate where the government or the people have no control over what is done with that money. So if he is concerned that the... No, because he's trying to make the point that it is the people's money and it should be put in the consolidated fund. So then why then do you have a real estate option that allows for the majority of the money not to go in the thing? So he is misleading the house this to make us believe the that they are putting all of the money in the consolidated fund, which they are not. But it's the same thing, it's the it's same it's function. Property. You don't make millions of the program, so you must know about the real estate option and all the other options. Hmm. Maybe that's what you're speaking. Why well, you don't go out in the public and say it? Go out in the public and make your statement. Why well, you don't do the same? Make your statement in the public. You know somebody. Answer, so, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. And again, Mr. Speaker, the monies are being placed in the consolidated fund. And so, Mr. Speaker, when you take up the budget estimates, every single individual can see how much money the government expects to collect. But Mr. Speaker, when some, of, when some persons are speaking about the Citizenship by Investment Program, Mr. Speaker, they must bring all of the information before the public. Because it is the very same persons, Mr. Speaker, who gave the Citizenship by Investment Program, Mr. Speaker, a bad name, not only in this country, but regionally and internationally. Regionally and internationally, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, from time to time, you see these news alerts that this person is wanted and the person who has sink its citizenship got it by investment. Uh, and the majority of cases, when you check them, Mr. Speaker, are persons given citizenship under the former administration. The majority of them, Mr. Speaker. That's not true. Mr. Speaker, when you look at the case, for example, of Magadam, Mr. Speaker, yes. Magadam. Yes, tell us about that. Magadam, Mr. Speaker. Tell us about Magadam. All sorts of articles being printed about Magadam. Articles like what? A gentleman, Mr. Speaker. Tell me. Who not only had St. Kitts Navy citizenship, but had a diplomatic passport for the Federation so of St. Kitts and Nevis. So what? Showed up. So what? Showed up in Canada, Mr. Speaker. A million. a million dollars. Showed up in Canada, Mr. Speaker. 
And when he showed up in Canada and he was questioned by immigration authorities, he said he's there for a meeting with the Prime Minister of Canada. That I don't even believe that is true. What came out of that, Mr. Speaker? That is not true. He is misleading the House. I rise on a point of order. That is not true. Show me where it was published. Show me any official document from the Canadian government that says Mogadon showed up in Canada asking to see the Prime Minister of Canada. That is a lie. The disputed it. I've disputed it all the time. All the time. From over there, I disputed it. Don't tell me never. That is not true. He's misleading the house. I'm not going to catch you. When you give me the passport, when you give me I gave nobody any passport. I was not at the marriage with you, remember? Eh? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the articles over there, Mr. Speaker, showed up, and when he was asked, what is his purpose of visiting Canada, Mr. Speaker? He said it to them, Mr. Speaker, that he's there to see the Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, again, that this case, I rise on a point of order. Because he's indicating me. I, 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 I am not defending Magadam. I, I am defending, defending the integrity of the Labour administration. I, 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 I have a, a different opinion. Because I am going to, at all times, ask myself the question, is what being said, um, is, it, is it something directed to, to a member? And what I mean is, the, uh, the government of the day could, 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 could criticize may I speak, could yes, criticize the former government in the harshest terms. And unless, and similarly the opposition can criticize the government of today in the harshest terms. And unless I'm convinced that there's some direct allegation made against a member, I, I would allow such criticism. We can't have members on every, every point trying to, to Mr. counter. Mr. Speaker, We're not going to get anywhere. I was the my, ruling is, my ruling is, unless I am satisfied that what is being said is a direct allegation, an insinuation against a member, I would, for, I would more often than not allow the criticism. Let me put it like that. I will let him Continue go. I will listen to him carefully again. Yes, yes. I will and listen so Mr. to him Speaker, very carefully. I state carefully. again for the record, Mr. Speaker, that when he showed up in Canada with the diplomatic passport, he said he's there to have a meeting with the Prime Minister of Canada. That is a fact. That is a fact, Mr. Speaker. Answer, so, Mr. Speaker, speaker you yeah, the articles appearing all over. But even worse than the articles, Mr. Speaker, is the fact that because of that particular scandal, the visa-free entrance of petitions and divisions to Canada away, yeah. was taken away. Mr. Speaker, today I rise on a point of that order. Is so and that is not true at all. On a, no document on a, in the government today or in the past honorable, says that Canada remember, withdrew the visa requirement for, because of that. Honourable Member for number six. That is not true. Again, to me that is, is the opinion of a member no, speaking. No, it's, it's a harsh government. criticism. He's stating. No, it, it, is it is a harsh criticism. It is a falsehood. Honourable Member for number six. It is a falsehood. We can't prove that it's, it's, it's a, it's a I falsehood. I am telling that's, you it's a that's, falsehood. That's, that's he has no document to prove what he's saying. It's a criticism of the former government. government. He's stating a fact. No documents still in the house. He's Continue on to remember for number six. <laughs> I mean, this is not true. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, if you go to the securitydocumentwall.com, and it says, Canada has revoked visa-free arrival status for citizens of the Caribbean island nation, St. Kitts and Nevis, yeah, saying that the island's paid citizenship program raises too many identity risk. Yes. I am right that. So, I am right that, Mr. Speaker. So, what's happening yeah, now? I think right now? that, Mr. Speaker. What's what happening now? That came out of the Magadan scandal, Mr. Speaker. The visa requirement will ensure that Canada will be able to properly determine the true identity of St. Kitts and Nevis passport holders and to deny entry to those who would otherwise be inadmissible to Canada, said the Canadian Embassy in a statement. 
on a point of um, order, clarity, in order for the I member not the to, no, I, I'm going to be very brief. In order for the member from number five not to mislead this house, he's stating Mr. Mogadam as a singular threat as to why our visa-free access was removed from Canada. I would like to know what the present government has done with the citizenship and the regular passport of Mogadam. Is he still a citizen? Does he still have a passport? Or have they done anything to him? Because if he's a criminal and if he has done anything... That cannot be a point of order. Well, a point of clarity then. A point of order must, must be... A point of clarity. Can you please provide... Honorable member for number three. Can you please provide clarity as to what the government has done with Mogadam since he has been a threat? Honorable member three, you're running the risk of me disciplining you here and now because I'm speaking and you're, you're attempting to speak over me it will not be allowed this is speaker the article Continue. goes on in November 2013 a scandal erupted after Iranian citizen Alizira Mogadam turned up at the Canadian border carrying a saying it's Nevis diplomatic passport saying he was there to see the Canadian Prime Minister and that is why I said they're hypocrites, Mr. Speaker, trying now to change the facts. What? Trying to change the facts, Mr. Speaker. I really don't what is the connection here. It is so bad. And Mr. Speaker, since then, you also had a Finson report. I don't think on a point of order, I rise. He can be referring to members of this house as hypocrites. I don't think it's right for him to do that. That is true. He can't continue to do that. He cannot continue to do that, Mr. Speaker. It is wrong. And he knows it is wrong. He should either withdraw it or you speak to him, telling him, don't do it again. It is wrong. On that, on that point of someone referring to someone as a hypocrite, in my view, it's just a harsh criticism. So I you can refer to members over there as hypocrites? It happens all the time. Okay, fine, 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 fine. It is nothing that is new. Fine. That is fine. Okay, no, 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 let's, 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 let's be... That is very good. It happens all the time. I never said that you all... I never said you are fraud, you know. I didn't say you are fraud. Continue. No, 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 no. I could have done it, but I didn't say it. I was very mindful of what I said. the dictionary, Mr. Speaker. If you're a hypocrite, you're a hypocrite. You Because you're coming in here, and persons are listening to you, I would swear that during your 20 years, that things were so perfect. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, you had the Finsen report being issued. Yes. Which spoke about saying it's a Nevis. So what's the matter And saying, Mr. Speaker, to the entire world, that you have illicit actors. Yes. Illicit actors. Illicit actors. Taking part in the St. Kitts Navy Citizenship and Investment Program. The Finsen report says, Mr. Speaker. None. That persons, Mr. Speaker. None of us are accused of Persons involved. And watch. In all sorts of fraudulent activities. And after We're gaining citizenship by investment. Okay, honorable members. Well, I guess I now have to. Honorable members, it's it's apparent to me I now have to begin to deal with what's unfolding in a different manner, and so I'm asking that the cross talk be lessened from this point onwards, and persons who want to raise points of order, they know the procedure. Continue, honourable member. But man, it's a set of hypocrites, them day. To them, the Mr. Speaker. Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker, it's not just the fence and uh, report alone we had. Mr. Speaker, this government got a company by the name of Ipsa, a company by the name of Ipsa, Mr. Speaker, to do an audit of the CBI program, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Ipsa has produced a report. And in that report, Mr. Speaker, on our commission, on our commission. Ipsa speaks, the, the Ipsa report speaks to several different persons who applied for citizenship 
and gave an opinion as to whether or not those persons should have received citizenship. I've heard persons in here, you know, Mr. Speaker, talking about conversion and the one day certain persons were able to get citizenship because persons benefited from it and they said some formula, a formula for this and a formula for that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let us look at some of the cases in the IPSA report and what that report says, Mr. Speaker. The report... That's what the commission did. The report, Mr. Speaker, refers to one Mr. Frolov. His wife and son are Russian-born citizens who were living in Dubai at the time of application. They made application for Sankit citizenship through the 617,000 US dollars purchase of Unit 307 Marriott Residences. It says, Mr. Frolov is wanted by the Russian Investigational Division of the Ministry of Internal Affairs. There is a partially translated document that indicates that the applicant is charged with a criminal offence. I'm going to skip some of it, Mr. Speaker. The report goes on, Mr. Speaker. I'm coming to the issue. I'm coming to the issue. It says there's a letter on file dated December 13, 2012, from Mr. Frolov, which was directed to former PM Douglas. Yes, what do you say? The letter indicates that Mr. Frolov and his wife met with PM and Dr. Kamal in Dubai the previous week. Yes. Mr. Frolov thanks the PM for taking the time to review the application and indicates he's excited about the prospects of becoming a sainted citizen and contributing to the economic growth of the country. It appears that the application may have been denied by CIU, made its way to the review board, then referred to the cabinet by the review board. There's a handwritten and dated document on the cabinet secretariat stationery that says, the case of Mr. Andrew Fallov and family was referred to the cabinet of minister by the review board. Cabinet reviewed all of the facts and agreed to assist the Fallov family on humanitarian grounds. I am therefore requesting that the necessary process be completed as cabinet has authorized the honorable minister with responsibility for citizenship. That wasn't me. To grant citizenship to the Fallov family, signed cabinet secretary and it has on the seal of the office of the PM. So what is the point? The material contained within this file is significant. Legal counsel has provided a wealth of material documentation, analysis, letters of reference, and a host of other supporting information. What has not been provided is a single declaration by the applicant indicating that he did not participate in the alleged offense, profit from it, or extract any funds. There is little in the way of explanation as to how a decision was made to grant citizenship on humanitarian grounds. Humanitarian or compassionate grounds is a criteria for, of immigration law described as an unusual, undeserved or disproportionate hardship caused to a person seeking consideration. It's only one case, Mr. Speaker. One case, Mr. Speaker. A man with a criminal record, Mr. Speaker, applied for citizenship. The unit denied the citizenship. The gentleman meets with the former prime minister in Dubai. A week before. And by a week later, the matter goes to cabinet and he gets citizenship, they said, as a humanitarian effort. A man involved in crime, Mr. Speaker. A criminal, Mr. Speaker. A criminal. So you think that that's what he meets the week before? That's what you're saying? Yes, I believe so. Met with a criminal in Dubai, Mr. Speaker. And by the next week, the matter in cabinet and the criminal is given citizenship. And then he says, that he ran the program effectively and efficiently. Exactly. 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 A criminal by the name of Mr. Frolov. Frolov, just, just who? Me, I have made no <laughs> A criminal by the name of Mr. Frolov. The matter goes to the cabinet for good reason. He meets with
put him in Dubai. Order, order. Order, order. Remember, a um, a week before that report. Give me some specific. What report it, is that? It's the IPSA International Report. Look back report. I IPSA Consultancy <coughs> saying it's a Navy CIO, and it's dated the nineteenth of May, twenty sixteen. And of course, I would like for a copy oh, Speaker, to be provided. Sure. To, 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 no, okay. Mr. Speaker, continue, please. Oh, Mr. Right. Speaker, it gets worse than this. It gets worse, it gets worse Mr. Speaker. And that is part of what should be done oh, yeah. by Ipsa. Oh, yeah. It gets worse. That was important to do that. Mm -hmm. so Here's the next case here, Mr. Speaker. I'm, 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 I'm watching the conversation. Mr. I'm sorry, Speaker. It so gets worse. No, no, Let me refer to a second case, Mr. Speaker. Brought, brought and this is the case, Mr. Speaker, speaker, of a gentleman by the name of Richard Stewart Strong. Are you reading from what? Honourable the same Ipsa report, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. Based on the information contained within the primary applicant's due diligence report, which again is un unavailable for the review, a letter dated December 12, 2011 was crafted under Dr. Ken Ballantyne's signature as legal advisor, head CIU. It stated, we regret that Mr. Richard Stewart Strong is not a fit and proper person to be granted citizenship of St. Kitts and Nevis. On October 21, 2011, the head of the CIU, Ms. Pemberton, forwarded a handwritten minute paper to the Prime Minister, <coughs> stapled to the aforementioned letter signed by Dr. Ballantyne. The Prime Minister responded on the bottom of the page with handwritten instructions. Please prepare a certificate. Wow. Wow. Mr. Speaker, please prepare a certificate. The full background onto that particular file. He cannot read one letter and get away with that. Something has to be a certificate. Because I would not have had that privilege unless I was directed. And only the cabinet, only the cabinet can direct me to do anything like that. So I would like to see the full file. Unless I see the file, I will say you are misleading this house. I would like to see only the cabinet can direct me. Only the cabinet. Of course. I can't direct myself. I never would direct myself. Mr. Speaker, I would like to see the full contents of that file. He can't come and read the handwritten thing here. That is, I believe, misleading and wrong. And so, Mr. Speaker, when you hear about conversion, you have to wonder if people speaking about conversion because they're not about conversion. What evidence of conversion? I am saying that, and I said what I said. Mr. Speaker, it goes on. I review. It goes on. At which point the file was approved. There was no rationale provided for altering the original determination and approving citizenship, especially in light of what appears to be overwhelming justification criteria for denial. In the application under section C44, have you been ever arrested or convicted or found guilty of any offenses against the law in any country? The answer no. Question 49, have you ever been invest under investigation by any law enforcement agency or tax authority in any country? Again, the answer no. A review of some of the material available on the internet reveals that New York U.S. Attorney Elliot Splitzer, a lead federal law enforcement officer, summoned a grand jury during the investigation of the primary applicant and his companies. As a matter of fact, the last thing that it says here, Mr. Speaker, the removal of the due diligence report with a notation confirming that direction leaves the optics of a less than transparent decision-making process. IPSA was brought in to look back into cases right. and look back at your badness. And Mr. Speaker, and imagine, and they did not they imagine, Mr. Speaker, imagine, Mr. Speaker, oh, yeah. that you have given imagine, Mr. Speaker, they haven't seen the cabinet directed to you. Citizenship oh. by Investment it's Unit says a minute paper to the former Prime Minister indicating that this person isn't fit for citizenship. And a note goes back 
Please prepare a certificate without any sort of explanation. Mr. Speaker, I think it would be in order for me to ask you to look at the document that he's reading, and unless it is against the normal practice, I'd like to see it myself. I would really like to do that. And I will remember to provide me a copy of And I would document. really like to look at it, because I really don't believe this is the full story. It cannot be. I'm glad to know that. Because none of you got tricked me inside here. I would want to see it myself, Mr. Speaker. Definitely. And then you come back and say, okay, that's Because when you begin to do that, you know, Mr. remember I have information, you know, a lot of information. A lot of information. Let us look so, uh, case when you are Mr. Open. Speaker. Case number three, Mr. Speaker. It's called a foil man. I should have Case number three. In June 2006, the command is applied. Same report. That's two counts. It's a third count. Well, I like to see all of them. In June 2006, the command is applied for Saint Kitts citizenship. Who is that? On June 2006, no, on 2006, the 11th Monday, 16th day, say you advise the service provider that applicants Aditya and Stuti Kamani. Ooh. Could not be supported by this application. Dubai Police, Dubai Police listed both as managers who had graduated university in 2003 2005. It was clear to the CIO that both applicants were not students as declared on the applications. So you said I want to? And we, we hold on. <laughs> on the 31st of May 2007, CIO informed that the service provider is that Reshmi Kamani and his brother, Deepak Kamani, were on the list of most wanted individuals in Kenya. The Kenyan passports had been cancelled and a reward was offered for information and assisting with their capture. On the 6th of June 2007, the Kamani applications were denied. Mm -hmm. On the 13th of December 2007, that's how many years, 11 years ago to today? You remember that one? Yes. No, 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 no. no I don't expect you to. Go ahead. A memo from CIO to the PM, that PM, that former PM, revealed that the PM instructed that the commanding applications be forwarded to his office for review. <laughs> CIO you. informed the PM that the solicitor representing the applicant wanted the files forwarded directly to the PM prior to the due diligence being conducted, advising, advising that the solicitor stated he would discuss the file with the PM, PM on the golf course. Me PM Douglas. On the golf course. Oh, go ahead. Me, PM. Me, PM. stated in this memo that the applications had been denied due to serious allegations of involvement in inter alia graft, corruption, and bribing of senior government officials. He makes a wonder if he wanted to come here to bribe other government officials. He's super golf. He makes a wonder that. Every Saturday morning, he's super golf. Remember that. But this is a man who has experience in bribing government officials. Of course. Huh? He's super golf. Bribing government officials. He's super golf. I play golf. And the 18th of May, 2008, the file was approved in principle. No notes were attached to the file explaining what transpired from December to May to reverse the decision. In April 2006, anti-corruption detectives posted a 100,000 bounty for information leading to the arrest of Rash Mikant and his brother Deepak, who appeared to have absconded following a police re request the previous month for the latter to surrender his passport and firearm. Police said they considered the two brothers suspects in the ongoing investigations into the anger leasing affair and security related contracts and that they wanted them for questioning over their involvement in the contracts. And the final paragraph, Mr. Speaker, says the review agrees with the original decision of the CIO that the applications be denied. So all it took, Mr. Speaker, a conversation on a golf course. Well, I'll the morning, right? A conversation on a golf course, Mr. Speaker and an application approved 
for a man who was wanted for illegal activities. Yeah. A man who was wanted, Mr. Speaker, for bribing government officials. And you have to wonder, Mr. Speaker, if he bribed any government official here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Number six. Number six. Number six. You have to wonder who he bribed, if anyone, Mr. Speaker. Speaker. Was, was, was he telling to look back? Who he bribed? Of course. Mr. Speaker. He goes to the Gulf Coast. Mr. Speaker. I think it's important. Mr. Speaker, every Saturday morning. My signature does not go on any document unless, unless. for approval unless it is sent to me from the CIU for approval. Oh, oh just a minute. Just, just a minute. Just a minute. Oh, if the matter would have gone to the review panel and the review panel directs the, perm the permanent secretary or the cabinet secretary who sits in that panel to give me instructions to sign. That is how it is done. I am telling you, that is how it has always been done. I would never on my own. Of course, I can have a conversation with anybody anytime. But that is exactly how it was done. Anything else, I want to see those things. Because I believe I would have been instructed to. Sorry? I said, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. I said his picture appeared. Appeared. Passports being sold. This guy is Mr. Speaker. Passports being sold like sugar cakes, Mr. Speaker. Well, it seems as though the sugar cakes were being sold at the Gulf Coast. What, what, what kind of <laughs> Imagine a solicitor. A solicitor is going to say. I see why the member asked you to say. The PMS instructed that the file be sent directly to him. Because he's going to have a conversation with him on the Gulf Coast. And after the conversation, Mr. Speaker, the passports, the citizenship is approved, Mr. Speaker. Approved. And so when they come in here, Mr. Speaker, speaking about citizenship by investment program, Mr. Speaker, when they're speaking about citizenship by investment program and money is being converted and all these sort of statements, they should explain to the public, Mr. Speaker, those cases and all the other cases listed in the IPSA report, Mr. Speaker. Is it what you're saying now? You open the camera work. No, sir. I am not opening the camera work. You have a demo, madam. You have Renbio and all of the others, Mr. Speaker. Renbio? You buy your bow, whatever the man name. <laughs> and that is what was happening with the Citizenship by Investment Program, Mr. Speaker. That is what was happening. Well, that is nonsense. Tell me no, that is nonsense. One, on humanitarian efforts. Man applied for citizenship. Applied for citizenship, Mr. Speaker. The decision is he is not fit to be a citizen. A different decision is made to give him citizenship. It's important for you to say whether this cabinet has ever had any application complaint. Never ever. Never, ever, ever, ever. Never, ever, ever. And so, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, when they speak about citizenship by investment, Mr. Speaker, they should apologize to the public for the tarnish the reputation of this federation. Tarnish the federation, Mr. Speaker. Remember one question. Is there still a review committee in place? No, no, no. I don't know. Let's get the point of order. I don't think so. That's not the point of order. It's not the point of order. What about the recommendations? It didn't say this band, it could have to be put here. Oh, the band is saying no here. No, 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 but we brought it into the new program. We, I have to put it here. And I can do that. No, no, we won't have that. That's 2016. Mr. Speaker. Sorry? The member for number six in giving his presentation, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. In giving his presentation. You you he spoke about accounts for the SIDF, Mr. Speaker. And how since 2013, no further audited accounts 
have been placed before the parliament. And Mr. Speaker, while we accept that, the member for number six should be the last person to speak about audited accounts coming before the parliament. NHC was established in 1997, Mr. Speaker. As the Prime Minister. From 2004 until now, I've been a member of this parliament, Mr. Speaker. As the Prime Minister. And for the last 11 years, Mr. Speaker, not a single account in respect of NHC ever came before this parliament. The entire lifetime of NHC. They are coming now? From 1997. Are they coming now? Not a single year of audited accounts in respect of the National Housing Corporation. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. Hypocrites, Mr. Speaker. Talking about accountability and accounts coming before the parliament. I asked the Minister of Tourism about the Philippa Development Corporation when he became the minister in 2005, 2015. The last set of accounts were in respect of the year 2006. Nine years behind. Nine years behind. When persons signed our accounts since 2013. It seems as I forget. They had responsibility for the Ministry of Finance in this country. But to 2015 now, thanks to the Minister of Tourism, Lindsay Grant. Not a single one for NHC. And behind by nine years in respect of the Frigate Development Corporation. And I'm sure if I go around and ask Mr. Speaker, almost all of the other accounts behind him. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, Carnival celebrating 47 years this year. 47 years this year for Carnival. And I ask them if they ever brought any accounts to Parliament in respect of Carnival. The first set of accounts for Carnival right now before the Cabinet to be tabled very shortly in this National Parliament. Music Festival. Not a single set of accounts in respect of music festival. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. <laughs> Coming in here talking about SIDF and now count since 2013. As if he expects the persons will forget his record of failure. failure. His record of mismanagement. That is his record. And so when he came in here and he ended and he spoke about experience. That is the experience we have had with him as Prime Minister of this Federation. And that is why I said they're hypocrites, Mr. Speaker. Hypocrites! <laughs> you can't coming in here trying to deceive persons. Yeah. Why are they trying to deceive persons, nah, Mr. Speaker? In his statement this morning, Mr. Speaker, he said that the ECCB report, the ECCB report has been taken down off of the ECCB site. And he wonders what is there to hide. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, last night I went on the ECCB website. And the accounts are the Economic and Financial Review, June 2018. It wasn't there. There, Mr. Speaker. It was not there. And saying it's a Nevis listed prominently there, Mr. Speaker. Last night it was not there. Last night? Last night. I told him it was there. The I got a copy. It was removed. We call and ask why. It 2017, dear Mr. Speaker. 2018, dear Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, you know it is one thing. It is one thing to come in here and impute improper motive relative to the government. But when you are going to take a financial institution such as ECCB and impute that kind of motive, saying the report has been removed. Because they're trying to hide something on behalf of the Senate's government, Mr. Speaker. No, 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 they have to apologize to the ECCB, Mr. Speaker. Nobody said that. Mr. Speaker, on a point of order, no one on this side said that. I spoke earlier, no one here except Mr. Said member that said that. None of us said that. to the ECCB and ask them to take it down. I said that. That's I mean, that's I mean, that's that's that is not so. You don't say that. That is not true. None of us said that. Mr. Speaker, I'm going to quote what he said this morning. 
He said, I could not tell Mr. Speaker, but one day if our central bank had discovered that the information provided to them by the government was erroneous and possibly falsified. Good. And as a result, out of sheer embarrassment and also out of caution, has been subject of fraud and deception with due information from as the a website. Yeah, I ask a question. I ask a question. I understand that Central Bank has now put out a statement. And in the statement, Central Bank refutes that the statements were ever removed wait, from wait, the Central wait, Bank website. Statement? That is not true. Where is that statement? That is not true. There was no report on the statement? site. According to the ECB's record, the Economic and Financial Review for the period January to June 2018 was uploaded to the ECB website on 8 October 2018 and was never removed. The ECB also gave reassurance to the Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, Dr. the Honorable Timothy Harris, that the bank had no reason to remove data from its website and, in fact, never did. Coming in here misleading the public. Mr. Speaker, lying on the central bank. Several persons went on. No one that judge said never that he's a stranger to the truth. A stranger to the truth, Mr. Speaker. A high court judge said that that the member for number six is a stranger to the truth. And he keeps living up to that, Mr. Speaker. Keeps living up to it, a stranger to the truth. Come on. Central Bank remove report. Huh? He ain't need a double salary. With all them properties, he ain't need a double salary. With all that heavy equipment that you have. And so, Mr. Speaker, when he's in here speaking about IMF, and I guess he's saying... Honourable Member, I think it's important for me to... To interject at this point, to indicate that pursuant or subsequent to the presentation by the Honorable Leader of the Opposition this morning, in which some of what you are referring to now was said by the Honorable Member for number six, I, as Speaker of this National Assembly, has received communication forwarded to me from the Central Bank, ECC Central Bank, and part of that communication, and I would quote it, quote, quote, according to the ECCB's records, the Economic and Financial Review for the period January to June 2018 was uploaded to the ECCB website on 8th October 2018 and was never removed. Please see link below for ease of reference. What's the link, Mr. Speaker? <laughs> what I would do... I would like to see the link because I am just getting what I what I would do for what I would do for full, full transparency is to direct the clerk of the house prior to the conclusion of this debate to forward relevant to all members to all members all members I, I am just for the record indicating communication I received um, on that note. As a matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, this is the ECCB's website. Publications. And when you look on the publications, Mr. Speaker, all of the reports are there. If it is that he did not know where to look, then he ought, Mr. Speaker, to have asked someone for advice. He can't be taking advice from Nigeria. He doesn't know better by now. <laughs> so speaker, if he doesn't know where to look, then ask. But don't come in here and make such a statement, Mr. Speaker. Come on, no, 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 you can't do that. Don't come in here and make such a statement. And as a matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, I respectfully ask Mr. Speaker that that statement be withdrawn from the records of this honorable house. Because it's inaccurate. It's a lie. 
It's, it's inaccurate, Mr. Speaker. Speaker. And all of the evidence is there, Mr. Speaker, to support that that statement is inaccurate. And that should be withdrawn, Mr. Speaker, from the records of this honorable house. And a number of other things. I would really like to see the website because, again, I am on the site and it's not there. Mr. Speaker, I am on the ECCB's website and the reports are there. What's the name of the report? Oh, Peter Cabbage, man. Go finish your song, right? Exactly. Go finish your song. Go finish your song. Mr. Speaker, can you move on? Yes. Are you talking about experience? Yeah. But what is his experience, Mr. Speaker? Experience in bankrupt in a country? Yes. Is that his experience he wants us to go back to, Mr. Oh, Speaker? Yes. That is what he's saying to the public, to go back to that experience. Yeah. We are not going back there, Mr. Speaker. The country has moved forward. And it seems as though he doesn't understand that. To go back to taxes, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, his budget address here for 1997. And when you go through it, an economy he inherited that was vibrant, Mr. Speaker. Taxes after taxes after taxes back in 1997, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, same thing. 1998. No. For the taxes, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. No, no, I'm not seeing it. It's not there. Anyway. Yeah, you get catch again, man. You get caught again. No, 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 no. I'm on the side. You get caught again. Oh, look, there you Taxes after taxes, Mr. Speaker. And I can go to them, Mr. Speaker. 1997, Mr. Speaker, one through of taxes. An increase in the rate of traders tax, 2% to 3%. Consumption tax, 25 to 4%. Restructuring of the fees in respect of business and occupation license, ranging from $2,000 at the top. An increase in the rate of travel tax, Seven and a half to ten percent. A change in the method of computing consumption tax. An increase in license fees, Mr. Speaker. That was 1997. 1998, Mr. Speaker. Electricity for commercial and industrial businesses increased by five percent. Motor vehicle and road tax went up nine hundred percent, Mr. Speaker. In 2000, Mr. Speaker, he came in the parliament. For the budget, and so they're presenting a tax free budget. But, Mr. Speaker, we were approaching an election. And as soon as the election was finished, Mr. Speaker, water went up 500%. Electricity went up 32%. Gas went up by 16%, Mr. Speaker. That is the experience he wants to take us back to, Mr. Speaker. We are not going back there. $2,000 to $10,000 Mr. Speaker. What's the cost of the services? The custom service charge from 3 to 5%. What's the cost of the services? Oh, Consumption remember. tax went up by 5%. I don't remember for number... 3% on the direct of Number fees. 5, please. Um, we, we can't have a response to everything that a member says. That but is true, Mr. Have, Speaker. We want... It's not nice. <coughs> 2006, electricity surcharge introduced for the very first time in this country. That's the experience he wants to take us back to, Mr. Speaker. 2010, the of them, a 17% VAT introduced on food, medicine, educational expenses. Someone for your dead, you bury them. Even the dead, he put 17% VAT on, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, Even the dead, Mr. Speaker. That was his record. That's the experience we want to go back to. We're not going back there, Mr. Speaker. Answer, Mr. Speaker. I haven't reached to the fact, Mr. Speaker. And maybe that is why he has been speaking about IMF, IMF, IMF all morning. He seems that he's in love with the IMF. No, no. He, uh, only the IMF can give information. Central Bank has provided information. The IMF has its, um, its world economic outlook. If you want to know what the economy is doing and what the projections are, Mr. Speaker, you can look to it and say it's a Nevis is listed. 
So he don't get his point, Mr. Speaker. But he knows about IMF because he has had a love affair with the IMF. Oh, yes. He bankrupted the country, Mr. Speaker, and took us to the hands of the IMF for a quarter billion dollars. Well, to the jaws of the IMF. And everything, Mr. Speaker, he came and he said to us, well, the IMF said this, so we can't do it. Can't do anything in this country because of his IMF that he called a homegrown program. Bankrupt the country inherited a country that was doing its best mm -hmm. better than all in the Caribbean and Latin America Public service increment for three. and bankrupt the country Mr. Speaker it takes a lot to do that you know <laughs> it takes a lot to do that yes. to go from the top way down bankrupt a country that was expanding Mr. Speaker and comes to say to the people of this country I have experience. Experience in bankrupting a country. We don't need that experience in that country. I said when I began, Mr. Speaker, four budgets and not a single increase in tax, but yet the economy is growing. That is what we have been able to do. That is what people want, sustained economic growth. Not that kind of experience. An experience where we saw 1,200 acres of land being swapped for debt. Hmm. 500 acres alone in Sandy Point. No, 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 no. Anyway, you know, I'm coming. 1,200 acres alone in Sandy Point, Mr. 500 of those acres in Sandy Point. I don't know. I don't know. And what he didn't say to the public, Mr. Speaker, is that he took the next 496 acres in respect of the valley and also swap that for that. So in respect of Sandy Point alone, 1,000 acres of land. 1,000 acres of land. Oh that is what we want in this country. That's the experience that you're referring to. And you can't refute that, you know. Can't refute it because it's the truth. And while Mr. Speaker, while Mr. Speaker, he has boasted that he left millions of dollars in the treasury. Why he had SIDF, Mr. Speaker, and boasted about... Boasted about, Mr. Speaker, how much money SIDF was making. Mr. Speaker, boasted about all of that. And not one single attempt made, Mr. Speaker, to reclaim any of the land, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what the country did not know, Mr. Speaker, what the country did not know is when land was being swapped for debt under his administration, 29 US million dollars given to Christoph Harbour. Under his administration, 29 million US dollars as of SIDF money given to Christoph Harbour. Not given. You can't say that. Invested. No security. Invested. 29 million dollars. Invested. Swapping land for debt instead of investing the money in the people's land. 29 million US dollars given to a private entity, Christoph Harbour. And, and that's 100 million US. I'm going to order. No money was given by my administration to Christopher Harbour. The SIDF invested. The SIDF invested money in Christopher Harbour because Christopher Harbour was seen by them and the government supported it to be a very lucrative investment. How much have you returned from it since you were there? Ask them. How much what? How much have you realized from that investment since you have been in office? Why don't you say it? Not a penny. Not a penny realized from it, Mr. Speaker. If you took land, it means you have... Government has taken any land from Christopher Faber. Or what do you have? No land has been taken from Christopher Faber by this government. You take the people land. You take the people land. 29 million US, Christopher Faber. And it's 100 million dollars, Mr. Speaker. Invested in Kitchen Hill. For 70 million dollars. Imagine that. That's 100 million US dollars. 
in Kitishan Hill. People land. And at the same time, Different. poor, Dr. the Dr. land of poor, ordinary people. <laughs> poor Dr. Beard was in it. Involved in a land for debt swap, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Dr. Beard. Mr. Speaker we Dr. will Dr. not go back to that. <laughs> this country will not go back to that. That is the experience. That he's speaking about. His firm represented Dr. And he was a that is the experience, Mr. Speaker. And Dr. Bid was a that isn't the experience that this country wants. His firm. And that is why he said to you, Mr. Speaker. They're hypocrites, Mr. Speaker. Hypocrites can't use the people money. Can't use the people money to retain the land on behalf of the people. But under this administration, and commitment has been given that come 2019, the government will reclaim some of those lands. And I am happy to say that 250 acres of those lands coming from the Navali area, yeah. giving back land yeah. to the people of Sandy Point. That is what this government has been doing and will continue to do. We haven't increased any taxes in order to be able to do so. Using revenues from the government. Using revenues. Mr. Speaker, when you look at some of the other Caribbean islands, all kind of taxes being increased. Civil servants getting a double salary tomorrow. No increase in tax to pay for that. The fact that he placed on food, we removed it without introducing any single tax and the economy is still moving forward. Every year increase taxes. 17% removed from food, removed from funeral expenses, and not a single tax introduced, and yet the country is moving forward. That is the experience that we want. Not his kind of experience. Not his kind of experience, Mr. Speaker. How much time I have left? We're going good. What? How many? Twenty minutes. We're going good. Twenty minutes more. Were you trying to have me on my time? No, that's why I said twenty minutes more, then we can have a more. Oh, yeah. You look at Antigua, Mr. Speaker, 2016, Social Security increased to 12% by January. That hasn't happened under this government. Not a single tax. You look at Mr. Speaker here, Antigua again, 2018, hotel room tax to increase. No such thing under this government. St. Lucia hits visitors with two tax hikes. And the two tax hikes, Mr. Speaker, they're referring to departure tax and some other tax, Mr. Speaker. I think a development tax and an increase in the, the, the departure tax, the airport departure tax. Barbados hikes taxes in new budget. <coughs> That's 2017. And on an IMF program, effective July 1st, 2017, the NSRL rate will rise from 2% to 10%. <laughs> the loan haircut for me, may I agree with you? <laughs> New taxes in, um, an increase announced by the Prime Minister of St. Vincent. This goes back to 2016. Your friend is different? Your friend. The king. The king has. I think the king has done long with the king. <laughs> A phone tax expected to generate 2.7 million. This one, Mr. Speaker, St. Lucia. You well, like St. Lucia? I think this one is his friend again. Gonzalez government, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Son delivered first budget address. And when you look at it, Mr. Speaker, all kind of taxes listed in there. You go, Mr. Speaker, adjustment to petrol tax, Grenada. You go to Trinidad and Tobago, same thing. St. Lucia 2018, same thing. Not a single tax introduced under this government. As should be the ship. And still managing the economy. Paying off for some of the land. 
And paid off for some of his debt, you know. Bet your career. After he increased, after he increased electricity rates and added a surcharge, a surcharge that we removed. Yes. yes. And then they are sent, taking the people oil month after month after month. That was jail. Anybody else doing that, they would have gone to jail. <laughs> you, you, you got Any individual doing that would have gone to jail. Yes, you you got jail. Month after month after month. Taking diesel, gasoline from Venezuela to run the generation plant. To run the generation plant. And never once paid a cent, a cent. to Venezuela. The man ain't never got a penny, Mr. Speaker, not a penny. No. That's the experience we want to go back to. Venezuela. If it's the next country where you have credit ratings, we would have been at the bottom of credit, of credit ratings, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Man, in back nothing. No shame. Hypocrites, Mr. Speaker. No person today. I mean, something has to be wrong with that. Something has to be wrong with that, Mr. Speaker. The Alba arrangement, Mr. Speaker. Well, if that is the Alba arrangement, how come this government has paid money to Venezuela? Alba, you do nothing with people. If I give you a lot of money, sixteen million dollars US, so you have to pay. The money. We still believe it's US. Paying them back. I believe I know it's not a cent. I mean, how oh, you could have a fair and just conscience, Mr. Speaker? Take the diesel every month. Increase the cost to consumers. Add a surcharge onto it. Yes. And still have back like a single cent to Venezuela. I don't know where the money goes in the bank of the country. That is why when you heard them over there speaking about corruption and how corruption can lead to things, you have to wonder what they know about corruption and how it can lead to bankrupt in a country. Perhaps speaking out of experience, speaking out of experience, Mr. Speaker, civil servants couldn't get an increase. Couldn't get an increase. No. You think any civil servant in this country? Ah, civil servants, what they got? Any civil servants in this country wants to go back to that? Couldn't get an increment? Couldn't get a double salary? Three years in a row now. They get a double salary. They feel it's an entitlement now. Even before December, they're asking you if they're getting the double salary. Because it has become the norm for them now, Mr. Speaker. It has become the norm for them. You put in can't have no comparison between this government and that government. Mr. Speaker, now turn to the Bastia High School. <laughs> and if all my time run out, yeah. speaking about Bastia High School, I would be satisfied. You see all these files here, Mr. Speaker? Bastia High School. That's yeah. a powerful presentation. Right. Oh, you see this file here, Mr. Speaker? Bastia High School. Because people want to talk about Bastia High School. I got them from out of the Ministry of Education that you left there. That you left there. Bastia High School, Mr. Speaker. Because we have had one song and dance about Bastia High School. Those who ain't got no shame. Speaking about Bastia High School. Speaking about Bastia High School. Mr. Speaker, I don't even have the time to go to some of these. Really? If you know any Africans, you don't open your mouth. If you know anything about Africa, Mr. Speaker, this one piece of correspondence here from the Barastia High School Parent Teachers Association. And this is dated 2012, Mr. Speaker. 2012, from the PTA. Reference science labs at the Bastia High School. It says, as parents of students who attend the Bastia High School, we wish through this medium to register our concerns regarding the state of the facilities at the institution. For decades, the Bastia High School has served the Federation as the primary high school on the island, producing many of the country's top professionals in different disciplines, notably many doctors, pharmacists, etc., who would have had their foundations in science at this prestigious institution. Obviously, we are quite upset to learn that for the past year at least, not a single lab has been in operation at the school. 
The biology lab is infested with rodents and termites, and the other three labs have some kind of contamination. The current state of affairs must be given immediate attention as it has serious implications for the health of both teachers and students, as well as student performance <coughs> in science, especially those students preparing for CISEC exams in 2013. So far, we are aware of the following. Several teachers and students have suffered from unexplained rashes, upper respiratory difficulties, difficulty breathing, coughing episodes, burning, stinging sensations when they are very close to or in the chemistry, physics, and integrated science labs. The agricultural science and biology labs were contaminated once books and other materials from the chemistry lab and physics labs were transferred to those two rooms. Despite several meetings, reports, discussions between the Ministry of Education and Barstay High School Administration, the chemicals have not been disposed of and are suspected to be the probable cause of some of the contamination. Already, for a whole school year, no students at Barstay High have had exposure to classes in a lab, not to mention the fourth and fifth form students who must complete SBAs and experiments as part of the CISEC program. In addition, use of lab frees up much needed classroom space for optional subjects. And Mr. Speaker, the letter goes on. And it's signed by a number of parents. That's one. So that's the letter from, from the PTA. To, to from the parents. To the Address to the Honorable Nigel Kiati, Minister of Education, Church Street, Bastille. So what's, what's the point, Minister? What, what is the point? Next letter. Those who received and taken consideration, you are now saying that because November 26th, you should replace it, put it over on the aquifer. November 26th. I don't understand. You, you want to build the school building right there or building somewhere else, not over well, there. Honorable Senator, is it your attempt to make a speech? Are you taking it done? Dear sir, at a meeting held on 24th November 2012, the members of the Bastia School PTA were praised of the circumstance at the school which was now ultimately led to the school's relocation to the Warner Park and Farmer Girl School Building. The situation is of grave concern to both parents and teachers. You heard them speaking, Mr. Speaker, as if nothing has happened to Barstay High School. But it's 2012. The students had to use additional facilities since 2012, Mr. Speaker. What was the date on the letter? Mr. Representative. November 26, 2012. I'm a medical doctor. Nothing is wrong with the school. <laughs> the 15th of January 2013, and I only going to read one paragraph here. I visited the Eastern Campus and got an earful from the plumbers who were busy changing toilets. But advised Clexton, Clexton, and I that the place needs more serious and permanent measures and that it would take at least three weeks around the clockwork as all of the fixtures, pipes, everything except the soakaway system was unsatisfactory. The trained plumber who works at Ketishan Hill says his children were not coming back to that school and one of the workers claimed he would rather go over a borehole whilst one would choose a cane field over the system even after the quick fix mainly because changing toilets still leave the problem of sewage gases coming back into the faces of children at the starlight wash basins. Imagine Mr. Speaker. What document is that one just and next letter Mr. Yes, Speaker. Please. And this one was written to a committee which had been put in place to report on the readiness of the Bastia High School. It had a number of persons on it. And it's signed here, Mr. Speaker, by Dr. Thelma Philip Brown. I know, I know. She was on the committee, Mr. Speaker, appointed by them. I know. I appointed I know. by him. I tell you, I know. Appointed by him, Mr. Speaker. And she reported, I know. I know. one man said, he ain't sending back the children, dear. Yeah, and next man said, 
He preferred to go over a borehole. And next man said, he prefers to go into a cane field. That is the condition that they had people, children under at Basti High School. Conditions that they would not accept for themselves or any family member of this, Mr. Speaker. Hypocrites, Mr. Speaker. As a matter of fact, the seven minister had a child going to a different school. Yes. Not the Basti High School. Yes. If he felt up there was so good, why didn't he send this child up here, Mr. Speaker? Next letter, 2013. I'm coming to all of that. The SDA school? Oh, you didn't know that? You didn't know that? You didn't know that? Oh, you're coming to all that. You don't know what you're talking about. You didn't know that. Mr. Speaker, he came in here and he spoke about mold. He said mold in this building, mold in that building. And Mr. Speaker, in one of the files, in one of the files, the following is a description of the predominant fungal groups detected from the ear and swab samples collected on November 21st, 2012 at the Basti High School. And a whole heap of them listed here, Mr. Speaker. Whole heap of them listed here. Come in here and tell the mole as if only mole, only mole was discovered at the Basti High School. That's the only thing discovered. But on the file, all sorts of different funguses were discovered. His file, His file not my file. His file. <laughs> you got next letter here from Michael Blake, a former education officer. The shift system in Washington Archibald High School is neither tenable nor desirable. It's an education officer written to him, telling him that, Mr. Speaker, and he made a number of recommendations. Let me go back to you. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. November 10, 2014. Oh Lord. From the Ministry of Education. Parents, students and guardians of the Bastion School are informed that there will be no school until further notice as we seek to put a schedule in place for the shift system that will be implemented. Please accept our apologies as we seek to employ the most workable arrangement and be assured that we will seek to do so in the timeless manner. <coughs> Send to the media unit. No. Send to the media unit. And it's addressed to Honorable Minister, notice sent from Ms. Crawford. Send for your guidance before being sent out. And this was signed by his personal assistant, Ms. Lang. They closed the school a first time. Reopened the school. Yeah. Children went back there after they told them nothing wrong with the school. Yeah. All they needed was some cleaning. Mind. And closed the school a second time and they couldn't even tell the children when they will be able to go back. It's all in their mind. All in their mind. They're crazy. Okay. Psychosomatic. Okay. Psychosomatic. Okay. Imagining things. Who said that? <laughs> But you really, anyway. <laughs> 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 the speaker might let me take it back, so let me not say it. <laughs> Let's send the next letter. This one signed by the then principal. They want to know all the protesting, all the teachers that are protesting because they have a problem with the school. And the principal sent back in the letter that it's all the teachers protesting because the teachers have a problem. So you yeah. build school and so if you want to build a school, you build it on the aquifer. That's what I'm coming to you on the aquifer. I'm coming to you. I don't know what the hell you is. Show me what's the aquifer. Why you don't have to close on the Ministry of Tourism? October 8, 2014. Infestation, fungal infestation. Why you don't ask him to close that down? And this one signed by teachers. Why you don't ask them to close it down? The Labour Department. And it says it is with a heavy heart that the undersigned teachers of the Basti High School have decided once again to compromise our health and carry out our duties 
At this juncture, however, we are asking the Ministry of Education to provide a safe environment for teachers, students and staff as soon as possible, or we will be forced to take action. How many students Signed by teachers. How many students? We had about eight to 900 students up there at the time. No? I don't know names, sir. Mr. Speaker? Your time has Mr. Speaker, I'm asking for the next 30 minutes. And even if I don't get to my ministries, I'm going to finish up by High School because I'm going to deal with them. Uh, the question is that the Honourable Member has requested an additional 30 minutes. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? 30 yes, minutes. Mr. Speaker. Granted. So you had all the issues with Bastia High School. Carfa did report. Kariri did report. Niyash did a report. And all the reports inconclusive, Mr. Speaker, as to what the problem is with the Bastia High School. That's not true, Minister. That's not true, Minister. That's not true. They had the three, as a matter of fact, the Bureau of Standards also did a report. That's not true. And after those reports commissioned under the former administration, they did repairs, open the school, close back down the school, put it back on the shift system. When we got into government, we said the shift system must come to an end. And within one year, Mr. Speaker, we brought the shift system to an end. Yes, that's true. We gave them a promise. Yeah. And we kept the promise, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. Yes, we did. And we said, that's what people are occupying. And we said, Mr. Speaker, we are going to build a brand new Bastia High School. And that is what upsetting them now. The fact that this government will deliver a brand new Bastia High School. Mr. Speaker, the fact is, we put several different committees in place to look at building a brand new Bastia High School. One such committee, Mr. Speaker, after the recommendations were made in terms of the site, and the site recommended was in the pond area, we said, all right, taking everything into consideration, we're going to put a committee of water exports together to advise the government. I am exporting water. None of the cabinet members is a water export. How many sites we looked at? We looked at, they looked at five, six different sites. And who, who were some of the persons on the committee, Mr. Speaker? Sites. What's the sites now? You had Halla, Dr. Hallas Haley. What's the sites? You had Cromwell Williams. You had Dennis Paul. You had Sandy Nettles. You had Arthur Rollins. You had Anthony De Silva. When you look at the CV, Mr. Speaker, for Dr. Hallas Haley, Dr. Halasa Haley is an environmental engineer with many years' experience in the area of water resources management. And it has several publications that she has done, Mr. Speaker. In terms of her education, Mr. Speaker, PhD in civil engineering, Environmental University of Toronto, thesis work, urban water systems, for sustainable cities. In 2000, MSc Environmental Engineering and Science, Stanford University. 1997, a Bachelor of Arts of, in Civil Engineering, Environmental. Well qualified lady, Mr. Speaker. She sat on the committee. You had, as I said, Mr. Speaker, Cromwell Williams, the Director of Public Works, Mr. Speaker. He sat on the committee. Cromwell, Mr. Speaker, has a Master of Science degree in hydrogeology, which again looks at water. That is the field that he studied, Mr. Speaker. And he did that at the University of London. He has a Bachelor of Science from UWE. Dennis Paul, a trained civil engineer, who was in charge of the water department, a bachelor's from <coughs> City College. You also had, an, Mr. Speaker, a gentleman by the name of Sandy Nettles, as I said. And let me see if I can find the CV for Sandy Nettles. But also an expert, Mr. Speaker, a man who has his own company. 40 years of experience. 40 years of experience. 
The city says, Mr. Speaker, he has done work in St. Kitts, he has done work in Nevis, Curissa, all over the Caribbean and elsewhere, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, yeah, Sandy. Sandy Metals. Yeah, yeah, Sandy, look. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sandy. He has performed water supply development projects for six projects in Anguilla, three projects in Costa Rica, seven projects in Mexico, as well as sites in Jamaica, St. Kitts, Curissa, Barbados, Barbuda, Antigua, Grand Bahama, St. Martin, Antigua, and Grand Talk. A well experienced man with his own company, Education University of South Florida. He began a, 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 a PhD in marine science. Didn't finish. He has an MS in marine geology and a bachelor's degree in geology with emphasis on marine sedimentation, University of South Florida. All experienced persons, qualified persons, Mr. Speaker. And so they came back, they gave a report to the government and they said, yes, you can build a school there. But if you're going to build a school there, Mr. Speaker, ensure that you put in a sewage treatment plant. Mm -hmm. The government accepted the recommendation. But now, Mr. Speaker, you're hearing all kind of song and dance that the government building a school, Mr. Speaker, on the aquifer. Well, Mr. Speaker, let us look at the aquifer. The aquifer is 5,000 acres of land. Not just over the year. 5,230 5, acres of land. That's the Basi Aquifer. This is a map not provided by me. Provided by the physical department of government. 8.17 And so Mr. Speaker, when you look at it, what is on the Basi Aquifer? What is on the Basti Aquifer, Mr. Speaker? You look at all of the Aquifer, Mr. Speaker. The whole of Newtown and the Aquifer, Mr. Speaker. Boardwalk and the Aquifer, Mr. Speaker. Here is on the Aquifer, Mr. Speaker. St. Peter's and the Aquifer. Up the village on the aquifer, Mr. Speaker. All of these areas on the aquifer, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, what happens is as water, Mr. Speaker, as water flows, whether it's from rain or otherwise, the water, of course, would seep through the earth into the aquifer. When you see the guts and them running, for example, Mr. Speaker, it is because the soil has become saturated and so the guts begin to run. The water seeps into the soil, down into the aquifer. So when you hear a person speaking to speak about the aquifer, they must tell you where the entire aquifer is. When you hear on that point of order, <coughs> Mr. Speaker, I was waiting for the member to clarify, um, but he continues to mislead the House to suggest that the aquifer which persons are referring to, where water is drilled from, um, includes all of these areas in Bassia. We very well know that the aquifer is eight point whatever amount of square miles, but there is only one section of the aquifer exactly. that you can pull water from exactly. at the moment. In fact, his water department would tell them that they have had to abandon areas of the aquifer because of contamination. Yeah. And if we continue, well I will make that, so he needs to clarify to the house that only the area which the Bastia High School will be built on is still being used to pull water from, not the areas that he has mentioned, like Birdwalk and here. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I have been pointed the 5,000 acres, Mr. Speaker, because what happens, Mr. Speaker, as I said, as I said, Mr. Speaker, the water flows from those different areas to where you have the wells. I said there's a concern, Mr. Speaker, in terms of seepage into the aquifer and water flowing downstream, Mr. Speaker, then there must be a concern about the hundreds of homes sitting on the aquifer. But none of them, none of them contribute to that part of the aquifer. Hundreds of homes sitting on the aquifer, Mr. Speaker. 
None of them. Because the world point, the world point, Mr. Speaker, the world point is where the water eventually accumulates. But the water flows from everywhere here to the well point. The one in the it flows downhill. It flows downhill, Mr. Speaker. At a point of order. Remember, I remember. I have allowed your point of order. I have another one. He just mentioned something. I want to clarify that. He mentioned that all the waters run into the well points that he's referring to. That is not true. Not true. We have a college street gut that takes water from a particular gut. I can't remember the name. That carries the water to the bay. There's also the Westbourne gut that carries the water to the bay. There's always also the OGs or all of these that carries the water okay. to the bed. Okay. Members, you know this is this is an area that it's it's, it's, point. it's, it's Remember, technical it's things. In the house. Yeah, and so, honourable members, honourable members, you know this is something rather different in terms of you know government policy. We're talking technical things. The minister is presenting his case as he see it. So you know I, I won't allow any more points of order to do with technical stuff. On your presentation, you you're free to you're free to present your side or your understanding of exactly that is not true. Continue. Your engineer is not true. Your water engineer. That is not true. Your water engineer. So the water engineers you have, you're right. The water engineers are water engineers will tell you that they're not pumping any water from those wells. Mr. Speaker, let us continue. Answer, Mr. Speaker. Please, so, this, this when you begin to look at the aquifer, Mr. Speaker, mm -hmm. all kind of buildings sitting on the aquifer. I didn't hear. All kind of buildings yes, that's, that's opposite. sitting on the aquifer. Yes, but I, I'm challenging that. There's a question about that. Answer, Mr. Speaker, the government took the advice to build the new Bastia High School there, but to ensure that you have a sewage treatment plan hmm. which is going to treat the water talk about that. basically at <coughs> third level Mr. Speaker I will speak about that answer Mr. Speaker we that, has, that is the decision which has been taken by the government so now Mr. Speaker you look at the site where the Bastia High School is supposed to be located and the big song and dance is that the Bastia High School is going to contaminate the aquifer this morning I made some calls Mr. Speaker to persons knowledgeable of the well field. I said in terms of the Bastia High School, how close will the Bastia High School be to the closest well field? Also proximity is important. The no. individual said about 1,000 feet away also from the well 1, field. 1,000 feet? I, kept saying I said, is it field. downstream no. of the well field? The individual said yes. It is downstream of the well field so that even if anything was to go into the soil, Mr. Speaker, it flows down to the sea. But Not up. Over. Not up. I then asked the individual, Mr. Speaker, no. I then asked the individual, do you have other businesses or other places closer to the well field? Yes. They said do yes. Want to, do want to add more on that? They said the church, which is next to Four Seas, it closer to the well field and more upstream and upstream of the well field. And how many people Caribbean live? credit card building? How many people live? Upstream and closer to the well field. The school gonna have more people than all of them put together. Of health, Ministry of Sustainable Development, FND, FND, Seven Day Adventist School. Which island? Which island? Seven Day Adventist School. They said his child went to. Closer to the well field than Bastia High School. Closer to the well field than Bastia High School. I'm coming to him. You have mechanic shops closer to the well field than Bastia High School. They build houses in that same area, and that is why I said they're hypocrites. Because they build houses in the same area, Mr. Speaker. Built houses in the same area. I'm coming to you, you know. I'm a bunch of hypocrites.
Hypocrites. Hypocrites. Answer, Mr. Speaker. Tony General. The denounced candidate for the opposition for constituency number one. He said no school will be built here because he's going to lie down there and bulldozer will have to run over him. Well, if he's going to take a principled position, we host. then he should move his house. We host. Because his house is also located very close to the well field. Closer. Close to the well field. And so if he's going to take a principled position, then the first thing that he ought to do is to move from where he's living. He ain't gonna sow a tree and plant at his house. He ain't gonna sow a tree and plant at his house. And they need to stop being hypocritical. Where are you trying to watch from? Where have they lived? Stop being hypocritical. Do you pass Mr. Speaker, I want to refer now to a letter dated October 17th, 2007. And it's addressed to Oakland Pete, Permanent Secretary, Public Works Utilities, Transport and Post. Contamin and it's written from Cromwell Williams, who was then the manager, water engineer, under that administration. Contamination of Taylor's Well by proposed housing developments, airport drainage, slash airport drainage. And the Taylor's Well, closer to the housing project that they put down than Bastia High School will be, and more upstream. What's, what's the letter here says, Mr. Speaker, I am obligated to bring to you the urgent attention to the urgent attention of the Ministry of Sustainable Development through you the possible deleterious effect on the Taylor's well mm. due to the close sighting of the proposed Taylor's East Housing Development and the Taylor's Townhouses. The Taylor's well is the main source of potable water for St. Peter's 270 gallons per minute. If these two developments are implemented, using septic tanks as planned, the Taylor's well would be contaminated from fecal coliforms and nitrates in a few years. It is my recommendation that these developments be serviced, be serviced by a package treatment plant to protect this well. Advice given to them in 2007 when they were building the houses in Taylor's, less than a hundred feet away from the well in Taylor's, <coughs> to put in a sewage treatment plant if they are going to build the houses. And not a single sewage treatment plant put in, in Taylor's. No, and coming in a bunch of hypocrites talking about Bastia High School building on the aquifer. A bunch of hypocrites, Mr. Speaker. Written to Oakland Pete by, by, by Cromwell Williams back in 2007. Built in spite of the advice. We have been told put in a sewage treatment plant. We have taken the advice to put in a sewage treatment plant. Cromwell Williams was the manager of the water department back then. He's currently the director of public works. We have taken experts' advice. We want to take experts' advice. They ain't taking advice from Cromwell. Cromwell, who did studies in this particular area, didn't take his advice. No, that's no a bunch of hypocrites. You're, you're shifting the argument. A bunch of hypocrites, Mr. Speaker. 2007, Cromwell said to them, if you're going to build houses up there, put in a sewage treatment plant. Why would you shift the argument? He goes on to say, Mr. Speaker, on November 23rd, 2006, I wrote expressing concern that the jails at the airport roundabout should not terminate in the vicinity of the Pans Needmus well field, as this water partly originates from the airport and is a source of contamination. I know that currently this water is being discharged just north of the Taiwanese farm at the Kim Collins Highway. I must again point out that this is not a sustainable solution as it would contaminate the underlying Bastia Valley Aquifer. Ignored again. Ignored. It is important for our planners and policymakers 
to realize that because of our dependence on groundwater, every decision on land use must take into consideration groundwater issues. A bunch of hypocrites! I'm coming in here making noise about Bastia High School being located on Aquifer. The government has taken the advice of exports. One of the very same exports, Mr. Speaker, said to them in 2007, what is that? Said to them in 2007, if you're going to build houses which just about a hundred feet from the well, put in a sewage plant. God then tell me which house up there is in a sewage plant. He said he wrote to them in 2006 about water in the drain coming from the airport area. Gave them advice on that. And again, Mr. Speaker, that too was ignored. Ignored. The gentleman said, uh, you are changing the argument now? No, 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 yeah, yeah. no. You change the argument now? Do not put any houses there. You're saying the switch in the plant. A bunch of hypocrites. There are appropriate septic tank um, facilities in those places. Appropriate septic tank facilities. The expert said, the expert said, put in a sewage treatment plant, not a septic tank. That's not what he said in relation to Taylor's. No. Not a septic tank. That's we from when we came in, septic tank. That's what he said. He said, do not put in septic tank. Put in sewage treatment plant. When we came in, we had houses with sewage backing up. We put in a sewage treatment plant. So what is the issue with building a new sewage treatment plant? Mr. Speaker, as I said, hypocrites. What is that? Hypocrites, Mr. Speaker. Hypocrites. 2007. It grounds at 2007. The very grounds. 2007. If you're going to build houses there where the town houses are single units, put in a sewage. Put in a sewage plant. No sewage plant put in. We were told put in a sewage treatment plant. You ignore your advice. The government put in the sewage treatment plant. And then now we get advice. Off site. Off site, Mr. Speaker. On the Off site. And so the record has to be set straight, Mr. Speaker. And when people hear you are making noise, they must say you are a bunch of hypocrites. A bunch of hypocrites. 2006. We're going to do something else. 2006. When you get back in government, the drain water will contaminate the well field. Do not allow the drain water to go into the area. Advice taken? No advice taken. No advice taken. And I come in here, come argue about Bastia High School and people putting Bastia High School in aquifer. Yeah, you should be ashamed of yourselves. They don't know what they're saying. They don't know what they're doing and they don't know what they're saying. Ashamed. When they say again, they will move and they say you and so, Mr. Speaker, we will have a brand new Bastia High School. That's the point. We have received advice, and we will adhere to the advice, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, how, much, how many minutes have left? You have another, another seven minutes. Another seven minutes? Yes. yes. Well, I really don't get too many ministers, but that's okay. Because Bastia High School has to do with education. And so, Mr. Speaker, as I wrap up, yes. I think I'll speak to my constituents. Yes. Because, Mr. Speaker, because, Mr. Speaker, I've come in here many years, Mr. Speaker, and I've spoken about many things in the constituency. And finally, I can say to the good people of Sandy Point that those things are happening. Yes. The Honorable Prime Minister referred to the police station. Yes. 20 years they rent in a police station already paid off the people mortgage. Yes. Paid off the people mortgage for the building. Rent in a police station for 20 years. The police station has since had to move. In another rental place. Into another rental place. Since had to move into an next rental place. place. But Mr. Speaker, I'm glad to say to the people of Sandy Point that the contract has been signed 
to build a brand new police station in Sandy Point under this government. Contract has been signed for that. Mr. Speaker, I remember one year stood up over there and I spoke about the roads down in Romney's ground and the fact that persons were complaining drainage down there so yes. because of lack of roads, mosquitoes down there affecting them. Yes. The then member for number one tell me how is Kansi at the project down there, Kansi Mitchum, and why Kansi Mitchum didn't put in roads. I said to him that's a government project and indeed it is a government project. I am happy to say to the people of Sandy Point now that they go down Romney's ground. Roads down there being put into Romney's ground. Yes. I spoke about the car park area. Yes. You go to the car park area right now. Roads being put into the car park. We had a meeting in Sandy Point one night on the Prime Minister Speaker. And I remember speaking about a road in Downing Street. And I called a lady named by the name of Mona Gums. And I said, imagine Mona Gums has been a supporter of the Labour Party all these years. And Labour cannot even put a road to accommodate the lady. Mr. Speaker, I ain't well done speak. Mona left she house come up on to come cost me, tell me the call she name. How Labour said the road cannot be built because they got to put in water means. Yeah. Well, the road can lean now. Yes. You go across the area, you know, roads like this. Yes. I spoke year after year about the play field in Sandy Point. Uh, the last time under that administration, oh, sorry, sorry. I spoke about the tennis courts yeah, sorry, that they started to build. They put down a slab of concrete. This slab of concrete couldn't even hold a half of a tennis court, never mind a full tennis court. Today I can say to the people of Sandy Point that if they go there, they will see the finishing work being done and two brand new tennis courts in Sandy Point. Well done. And within a few weeks, we're putting in some equipment for the younger children to be able to have slides, etc. to use. For 20 years, they refused to put lighting on the Sandy Point play field. And that also has been done. Not a single light was at the Sandy Point play field. No matter what time of the day you go there now, whether you go midnight or you go 12 o'clock in the afternoon, you can use the play field. Because 12 o'clock in the afternoon looks the same as midnight. Because of the lights there. I've spoken about the Sandy Point Primary School. And the fact that you had septic, the septic tanks there, Mr. Speaker, backing up. Backing up every minute. You had students and teachers complaining about the septic tank there. And nothing done to rectify the problem. That's not true. That's not true. Nothing done to rectify the problem, Mr. Speaker. We have now removed that entire block of toilets and we have delivered to the students of Sandy Point Primary School a brand new toilet block. Yes. Mr. Speaker, I got to this document you know, because it's dated May 2013, again from the Ministry of Education. And it speaks of a whole list of schools and repairs needed to those schools. And when you look at the majority of them, Mr. Speaker, not a single thing done not true. to rectify the issues yeah, at the schools. Industrial side the care centre, Mr. Speaker, listed here. Roof is presently leaking in the following areas. Library, dining room, nursery, one and two and three school. Electrical issues to be resolved. Mr. Speaker, about two weeks ago, we had the rededication of the industrial site care centre. Since 2013, issues there, there with the roof and nothing done. As a matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, I've seen correspondence. We are through the Japanese government. Funds were being given to assess with that school and the Japanese government couldn't deliver on the funds because they refused to provide additional money to fix the roof at the industrial site preschool. Sandy Point Primary, Sandy Point Primary, bathrooms and septic tank to be addressed. 2013, bathroom and septic tank to be addressed. Sandy Point Primary, addressed, addressed. The then Minister of Education was busy collecting money for his rental property up at Boardwalk that he had rented to the Commissioner of Police. 
ain't had any time to look after the needs of the school children in this country. And so when you hear him in here speaking, speaking, saying, oh, money ain't here to do this and money ain't here to do that, ask him what he did to address the needs of the children in this country. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And that is why I said to you, Mr. Speaker, they are hypocrites. You know what you want to do? Hypocrites. Mr. That's Speaker. Every single year. Every single year that kind of work is done. Before Mr. Speaker, as I come to a close, Jesus, I want to take the opportunity, Mr. Speaker, Speaker to thank all of the persons within the Ministry of Education, Youth, Sport and Culture, who have ensured that we continue to deliver projects on behalf of the people. Yes. Whether it's the Boyd's play field that are left unattended, that, that is, is now true. coming to completion, that, is that work is being done. Oh, yes. Whether it is the Challenger's play field that I did not attend to, that, that work is being done. Whether it is the Mansion Pavilion that has been rattling and the roof falling off, that work is being done. The Kayan Pavilion, you couldn't use it. Oh, yes. Work done there. Tabernacle, new lights. Kayan, new lights. We have delivered. Yes. The tennis court of the Warner Park. We have delivered. Yes. And we will continue to deliver on behalf of all of the people, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, when you look at the estimates and you look at the 80 something million dollars provided for education, we can remain assured, Mr. Speaker, yes. that the money is being used yes. in the best interest of all of the children of St. Kitts and Nevis. Whether it is the Tibet program, the artisan center that we just opened, Mr. Speaker, that is what the money is being used for. Yes. Yes. Whether it is for the almost 100 teachers who enrolled in the Masters of Education program at CFBC, yes. that the government is paying half of the tuition for, that is what the money is being used for, Mr. Speaker. The same program, Mr. Speaker, very same thing, Mr. Speaker, addressing the concerns of this nation and moving this nation forward. May it please you, Mr. Speaker.